Hello class 7 students, how are you all? I hope you all are doing well. I am Monica Pajaj, your science teacher and today we will discuss about your chapter number 2nd, Nutrition in Animals and Humans. Modes of Preparing Food Different organisms use different methods to procure food. Animals such as cow, horse, etc. pick up food directly into their mouth. Human beings use their hands to put food into their mouth. In amoeba, false food, cedopodium is used to engulf the food particles. A paramecium has brush-like body structure called cilia. It sweeps food particles from the water with the help of these structures. A frog uses its tongue to catch its food. A butterfly uses its feeding tube to suck nectar from the flowers. Hydra uses its tentacles with sting cells to kill the prey and put it into its body cavities. A spider waves a web to catch the prey. The mosquitoes feed on the blood of the animals and obtain it through their feeding tube by sucking. A starfish gets its food in an amazing method. It feeds on a small animal like snails, fish and worms. Their tube-like feet present in the body of a starfish capture the food. Now, starfish poops out its stomach through its mouth and wraps the stomach around the captured animal. The stomach is then withdrawn into the body where the food is digested. Snakes like the python swallow the animals they prey upon. See these pictures for your better understanding. This is a picture of amoeba, a butterfly, spider and a frog. Different steps in the process of nutrition. There are five main steps in the process of nutrition in animals. These are ingestion, digestion, absorption, assimilation and ejection. Let's start with ingestion. The process by which food is taken inside the body of an organism is called ingestion. When we put food into our mouth with hands, we are ingesting the food. However, different animals ingest food in different ways and have special organs for this purpose. Next is digestion. The breakdown of food into simpler and soluble molecules inside the body is called digestion. The process of digestion begins in the mouth and is completed in the stomach. Next is absorption. The process by which digested nutrients are taken to different parts of the body by the circulatory system through blood. The cells in the body help them absorb these digested food molecules. Next is assimilation. The absorbed simple soluble food substances are transported to different parts of the body where they are utilized by the body for energy, growth and repair. This process is called assimilation. Now, last one is ejection. The process by which the undigested food materials are thrown out of the body is called ejection. Teeth in human beings. See this diagram. Before we describe the nutrition in human beings, it is very important to know about the teeth and their care. In humans, teeth grow twice in their lifetime. First set of 20 teeth appear by age of 2 years. These teeth are called milk teeth. These milk teeth fall off one by one and a new set of 32 permanent teeth is formed by the age of 12. These 32 teeth are permanent teeth and last for the rest of our life. These 32 teeth for an adult can be classified into 4 types. Let's see this table. Types of teeth. Number of teeth in each jaw, total number of teeth of each type and their function. First one is incisors, 4, 8 and function is biting or cutting. Second one is canines, 2, 4, tearing. Third one is premolars, 4, 8, chewing and grinding and last one is molars, 6, 12, chewing and grinding. So, the total number of our teeth is 32. Let's see incisors, cutting teeth. 
These are four flat and blade like teeth present in the front part of the each jaw. These teeth are used to bite and cut the food into smaller pieces. Second is canines, tearing teeth. These are present on the either side of the incisors. They are two in number in each jaw. These are sharp and pointed and help in tearing the food. Next is premolars, grinding teeth. There are two premolars next to each canines, four in number in each jaw. These are broad and flat teeth. They grind food and bread into small pieces. Next is molars, grinding teeth. The remaining teeth in the jaw are three molars of either side of premolar. Six in number in each jaw. These teeth are also broad and flat. They are larger than the premolars. These teeth are also used to crush and grind food. See this diagram for your better understanding. Incisors, canines, premolars and molars. Now, let's discuss about structure of our tooth. Our tooth has two main parts. The roots and the crown. Each tooth is fixed into socket in the jaw bone by its long roots. In the center, each tooth has a pulp of blood and nerves. The pulp is surrounded by a layer of dentine. The top of dentine is covered by a tough shield of enamel. It forms the white shiny part of the tooth called crown. It is set in fleshy ridge on the jaw bone called the gums. This is a structure of a tooth. Now let's see an extra mite. Enamel is the hardest substance in our body, even harder than bones. It is secreted by dentine. Dentine is softer but as hard as bone. Care of the teeth or oral hygiene. Healthy teeth are white and healthy gums are pink. If proper care is not taken, teeth become yellowish due to the formation of a sticky film containing food particles, saliva and bacteria. This is called plague. The plague observes sugar and starch into acids. The acid is so formed, dissolves the tooth enamel and leads to the formation of cavity in the tooth. See this picture. Before brushing and after brushing. Gums hold the teeth. The buildup of plague at the place where teeth meet the gums leads to losing of teeth. You may now feel the importance of oral hygiene. Given below are some helpful suggestions for the proper care of the teeth and gums. Proper brush your teeth every day in the morning and again before going to bed. Massage your gums gently with a soft brush. Proper brushing of teeth keeps them healthy. A soft thread called floss is used to clean between the teeth. Wash your mouth thoroughly with water after every eating. Eat self-cleaning foods such as raw vegetables, carrot, radish, cabbage, fresh fruits, particularly citrus fruits. Avoid eating sticky and starchy food and sweets, chocolates, toffees, ice creams, etc. See these pictures. Correct ways of brushing the teeth. Tilt the brush at the 45 degree angle against the gum line and sweep or roll the brush away from the gum line. Gently brush the outside, inside and chewing surface of each tooth using short back and fourth stalks. Gently brush your tongue to remove bacteria and fresh breath. Now let's discuss about the human digestive system. The digestive system is made up of a long tube called the alimentary canal or digestive tract which starts from the mouth and ends at the anus. It is about 9 to 10 meter long and consists of mouth and pharynx, esophagus, food pipe, stomach, small intestine, large intestine and anus. See this diagram of human digestive system. Now we discuss the journey of food through different parts of the digestive tract. Ingestion of food in humans. Humans take in food through the mouth. 
we put food morsels into our mouth with our hand generally the right hand the mouth contains teeth tongue and salivary gland the front teeth in caesar are used for biting and cutting the bulk food into smaller pieces the canines pierce and tear the small pieces of food the premolars and molars help in chewing and grinding the food the process of digestion begin in the mouth with the help of saliva secreted by the salivary glands tongue tongue is a fleshy muscular organ attached to the floor of the buccal cavity tongue has taste buds which identify sweet salt bitter and sour taste this is a diagram of a tongue functions of tongue the tongue tastes the food it helps in mixing saliva with food it pushes the food towards the teeth for chewing it helps in swelling the food it enable us to speak digestion of food and buccal cavity the food is chewed and matched by teeth into fine paste three pairs of salivary glands release saliva in the buccal cavity saliva is a viscous transparent liquid which contains mainly water salts and mucin Saliva moistens the food and makes the chewed food slippery. This helps in swelling the food easily. Saliva contains an enzymes called salivary amylase. It digests starch into maltose. Thus, digestion of food starts in buccal cavity. See this picture of salivary glands. In esophagus, food pipe Esophagus is a part of the alimentary canal that runs from the mouth to the stomach. The muscles present in the wall of the esophagus contracts and expand alternatively, producing peristaltic movement in canal or peristalsis. These movement help in pushing the food into the stomach. See this picture. Movement of food through esophagus into the stomach. In stomach The stomach is a J-shaped thick-walled organ on the left side of the abdomen. It is the widest part of the alimentary canal. The wall of the stomach contains gastric glands. These glands secrete gastric juice, which contains three substances: hydrochloric acid, pepsin, and mucus. Hydrochloric acid kills many harmful bacteria that enter with the food. and makes the medium in the stomach acidic the mucus protects the lining of the stomach in the acidic medium pepsin digests like proteins in the food to form simple soluble substances called peptones see this equation proteins in the presence of pepsic acidic medium in the stomach gives pepstone Consequently the food gets converted into a partially digested semi solid food called chyme the chyme leaves the stomach and enters the small intestine in the small intestine the small intestine is a long coiled narrow tube about 7.5 meter long in length it is located below the stomach here partially digested food get mixed with pancreatic juice from pancreas bile juice from liver and several digestive juices of its own digestion of all the components of food gets completed here and at the end product are ready for absorption absorption in small intestine the inner wall of the small intestine has a number of finger like outgrowth called villi singular villus The villi increases the surface area for absorption of digested food. The villi have a network of very fine blood vessels called capillaries. The food substances are absorbed by the villi vessels to different organs of the body. In the body, the absorbed food is incorporated into cell components. This is called assimilation. The food that remains undigested and unabsorbed enters the large intestine this is a diagram of small and large intestine and this is a diagram of the villi large intestine the large intestine is shorter in length 
about 1.5 meters but wider than the small intestine. No digestion occurs here. Its main function is to absorb water from the undigested food material. Rectum The undigested waste from the large intestine passes into the rectum and is stored here as semi-solid feces. Anus The fecal matter is passed out through an opening called the anus. The process is called ejection. Nutrition in grass-eating animals Grass-eating animals chew half-digested food and are called ruminants. They ruminate or bring back the swallowed food to chew it again. Observe the cows, buffaloes and goats chewing continuously at the rest, even when they are not eating. All ruminants are herbivorous. Grass is rich in cellulose and is difficult to digest. Many animals including humans cannot digest the cellulose. Then how do ruminants digest food? First, it requires more chewing than it is. Why ruminants have big chewing teeth and with powerful jaw muscles? Ruminants have a unique stomach divided into four compartments. S. rumen, recticulum, omesum and abomasum. The half-chewed grass is swallowed and it first goes from the mouth to rumen, the largest of the four compartments. Bacteria and protozoa present in the rumen break down the cellulose found in the grass. This half-digested food then goes into the second muscular chamber, the recticulum from where it is sent back to the mouth as cut to the chewed again. This action is known as ruminating. The rechewed matter is swallowed for the second time. By passing the first two chambers, it enters the third chamber, the omesum, where food is broken down into still smaller pieces. Excess water is absorbed. Finally, it enters the fourth chamber, the abomasum, which is the true stomach. Enzymes act upon the food and digestion progresses. Digestion in Amoeba Amoeba, a unicellular microorganism found in pond water, is the simplest living organism. It has a cell membrane and a round dense nucleus which controls all its functions. There are many bubble-like vacuoles in its cytoplasm which help in the digestion. See this diagram. Nutrition processes in amoeba. Amoeba feeds on the other microorganisms found in its surroundings. When it sends any food, it sends out its finger-like projections called pseudopodia around the food particles to engulf it. Within a food vacuole, the digestive juices act on the engulfed food to break it down into simpler substances that are absorbed by amoeba. The undigested and unwanted substance is thrown outside the body through the vacuole. The mode of nutrition and digestion differs from animals to animal, but the basic process of digestion remains the same. It is the breakdown of food so that it can be used to release energy for all their activities. Now, quick revise with Reader's Digest. There are five main steps in the process of nutrition in animals. The process by which food is taken inside the body of an organism is called ingestion. The breakdown of food into simpler and soluble molecule inside the body is called digestion. The process by which the undigested food materials are thrown out of the body is called ejection. The plague absorbs sugar and starch into acids. Ok students, we have done our chapter. Now it's time to take your leave. Thank you. Bye-bye.